بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين صلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين اما بعد Belasting with Tufis Abu Da'af We finished that? Yes Today we take insha'Allah the second way of identifying the verb which belongs to chapter 2 which is What's chapter 2? So number two, okay, we gave you number two. Number two is what? When? Uh, when the uh, uh, is a yeah. Sentence. With the condition, the iron is not for the of the iron being not for the not being for a road. Letter. And what are the four letters? Start with the Hamza. Hamza. Ayn Ha. Ayn Ha. Or you can say Hamza. Ha. A. Ha. Ha. Ayn. Ayn Ha. If you follow the alphabetical order. But if you follow the order of where it is pronounced, the Hamza comes first, then the Ha here, and the Ayn, and the Ha is here, and the Wa'in, and the Ha is from the further, from the nearest part of the throat. Because the throat is three parts. The throat is three parts. The furthest, the furthest, and the middle and the nearest. From the furthest comes two letters. Two letters are pronounced from that place. A and ha. See? So you notice a, a, ha. If you say a, ha, you notice that they come out from here. So the hamza and the ha is here. <coughs> Then you have a, 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 and ha, ha. See? From the middle part. Ay and ha. Then you have gha. See? A bit above. Gha and gha. So from here comes out the ayn and the gha. Wadi? All of them are on the throat. But this is the furthest part of the throat, and this is the middle, and this is what? Uh, the nearest. The nearest. The nearest. The nearest they call Adna. Adna. The nearest part. What do they call it? Adna. And Adna is the masculine way of saying dunya. I say this because I relate it back to the hadith that we have taken Dunya is the feminine of Adna 
dunya is the feminine of what? Of Edna. And Edna means the nearest. So the dunya was called that due to it being near to the akhirah. That's a saying. And another saying is that it was called the dunya because it's, it, it is near perishing. It is the nearest to perishing. Because this dunya, faniya, fades away. Okay? Alright. So when the lab is a yeah, the lab. So we have the fa and the ain and the lam. When this lam is a ya, with the condition that this ayin isn't one of the rope letters, then it belongs to chapter what? To chapter two. To chapter two. Which is fa'ala, yaf, ayin, lu. Fa'ala, yaf, ayin, lu. Wadih? Clear? I'm going to give you the examples, of course, now. Is, it, is the general principle clear? Yes? Any confusion? And this bot has? 
or will have a fatha according to the ayn in the in the scale. Then the lam yeah. is what? Yeah. Is the ya. Yeah. And this ya yeah is going to have a fatha as well. What does it read? That's the Mali. Now we go to the Mubaya. The first letter is the Yeah. What do we write here? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. 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 Why? Because it's an extra letter. Layyim. Then what comes over the fat? The Qaf. And what does the Qaf take? And what comes over the Ain? Huh? Dad. What do we give this Dad? Kasa. What comes over the Lam? Ya. What do we give this Ya? Dhamma. Fatha? Dhamma. Can you read that? Ya. Li. You. Ya. Li. You. Ya. Li. You. Qadaya. Ya. Li. The same thing that happened to Da'awa. Ya. Du'uhu. Will seem. Will happen to Qadaya. Ya. Li. You. The only difference is that instead of the Lam being a wow there, it's going to be a ya yeah here. That's the only difference. Understood? What did we do to da'awat? Yad'u'u, yani what did we do when the lam was a wa? What did we do to the maadi? Yani da'awa here, da'awa. Da'awa, what did we do to the maadi? Huh? What? Can I hear you? Huh? What do we do here? Huh? Change the wall into an alley. Change the wall into an alley. Very good. Due to the principle. Which principle? Yes. Who's going to remind us of the principle? Ma'am, tafadhan. Remind us of the principle. Yes. Not you, the one... Tafadhan, uh, brother. Uh, try, try. Try. Uh, you can't? Okay. Uh, uh, we want someone that uh, doesn't want to answer. <laughs> ah, brother. Yes? You try, inshallah. Wendy? When the lamb is a walk. Okay. Not when the lamb is a walk. Any walk. Mm. So, when the wow or ya have a fatha. Have a fatha? Him, him. You didn't want to answer, so it's him. <laughs> okay, when the wow or the ya have what? Are you sure? Harakah. 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 So, so how do you become a Harakah? Ah, when the wow or the ya have a Harakah? And the letter? The letter before has? Huh? Yes, yes, has a fatha. What do we do? Then the the wow, just the wow. Wow and ya will become, will become so, so, <coughs> Yeah, right. repeat, repeat the principle for us. <laughs> if the if the wow is is having a fatha and the letter. The wow is having. A the wow is having. Halakha. Aye, And the letter before it uh -huh. having a fatha. Aye, wow. The wow of the ya will be changed to an alif. The wow of the ya will be changed to an alif. Ah. Yes, brother, you want to try? 
and read out for us. Me? You. Me? Yes. Uh, uh, if the if the if the wow if the wow or the yeah as a and before that letter there is a. <laughs> then, then the name will be changed to Ayn. Then the wow or the ya, not the noun, not only the noun. Whether it's the noun or the Ayn. Whenever it is pre preceded, no matter what position it took in the word. This is, I told you, this is a general principle that is inclusive to all chapters of so whenever there's a wow or a ya, wherever it may be, and it has a haraka and it is preceded by a fatha, we turn the wow and the ya into an alif. Okay, here is the is it applicable here? Here. Uh, why? Because number one, the wow has haraka. Number two, the preceding letter has but we go, so we change the wow into an elif, right? Or we change the, the wow into an elif, correct? And we said da'a, right? Well, here is going to be the same. The only difference is it's a ya instead of a wow. Okay? So ka, ba, ya. Oh, oh, yeah. See, the, the ya yeah had a haraka and the letter before had a fatha. So what do we do? Change the ya yeah into an Turn the ya yeah into? Ah, people. Can hear you. Change the ya yeah into an alif. But this alif is going to look like this. Yes. There are two types of alif. There's and this alif and there's this alif. The alif that looks like a ya. There's that alif and this alif. This you can call a standing alif. Because it is standing. And this you can call a sitting alif. Because as you see, you can see a sitting. Huh? Looks, like Looks like a snake, yes. Or how we local people sit down, huh? <laughs> yes. Are you? So this is an elif. This is not a ya. The, the one that does not have two dots under the day in the modern way of writing means it's a what? It's an elif. This is an elif. Why we wrote this standing and this sitting? They wrote this sitting to indicate that what it was turned from is a ya. Understood? Yeah, this was originally a ya. Okay? So to indicate that this alif was turned from the ya, it took the form of the ya. Understood? Yes. Yes. Wadi? Wadi means, is it clear? Yeah. Hmm? Okay. Now let's go and see what happened to the Mudari. The Mudari is Yafi'inu. Yafi'inu. Yaqo. Di. You. Yaqo. Di. You. Ya Qadi Ya Qadi Ya Qadi You This sounds like Ya Qadi Wu Anything common about Ya Between Ya Qadi Wu And Ya Qadi You What's common? Huh? Anything common between Yad'u'u and Yad'u'u? 
Я дергу, я подаю. А? Я? Я? Я дергу. Я дергу. Я Я дергу. 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 Я Я дергу. Я дергу. Я дергу. Я дергу. Я дергу. It's not heavy for you guys, <laughs> but heavy in our language. Hmm? In our language, the wow is heavy and the dhamma is heavy. So the heavy haraka or the heavy letter causes heavy speech. Heavy speech. Woo. Okay? It's heavy speech. So we got rid in Yadru, we got rid of that heaviness how? By giving the Dhamma to the preceding letter, correct? No. Huh? By silencing the last letter. When did we give the Dhamma to the preceding letter? In the middle. In the middle. That means when the when the wow was a what? I very good. Here, the case of Yak, Wudu. And then we gave you Yak, Ru, Yak, Wu, Lu, Yak, Ru, Wu. Where is the wow here? What is the wow here? Which letter? The I. What is the wow here? La. Did we do the same here as we did here? No. no. What did we do here to get rid of the heaviness on the wow? Yes. Throw it to the neighbor. Love it? Why? Vacant of any haraka. So the coast is clear. It's a bad Huh? It's a med It's going to be a med letter. Now it's not a med letter. When we place the dhamma on the preceding letter, now it's a med letter. Okay, so what what did we do here to get rid of the heaviness? Yani we did it the the Yeah, the the, uh, the easy way. We did it the easy way here. Because there is an easy way out. And it is to, to give this halakha, which is called causing a heaviness, to someone who can tolerate that heaviness, which is the qaf. Because the qaf isn't a heavy letter. Well, then. So, yaqulu. And here, what do we do to the dhamma on the wow? Can we give it to the preceding letter? No. Why? Because it's already occupied. And we have a saying, we have a saying in Arabic, uh, which says, Laysa hadha ushuki fadunji. What does that mean? That means this is not your nest, so get down. So that this place now is occupied by a haraka. It has no place for another haraka to come barging in. Okay, so that's why we cannot do the same here as we did here. So what do we do? We just drop it. Yeah, we do it the harsh way. There we did it the easy way. Here we did it what? The harsh way, because we just broke it down. Well then, clear? Here we're going to do the same. Can we give this dhamma to the preceding letter? Why? Because it's busy. It's busy. I can't take your burden now because I already have one, which is the kasra. So what I'm going to do? Same thing we did here. Now what does it read? Yabali. So in this case, we do the same. Qadaya yabdiyu becomes qada. Yeah, we. Qada. 
يقضي شرى يشري رمى يرمي واضح؟ كلير؟ Later. 
rabbuka an la ta'budu illa iyyah wa bi walidayni ihsana this is in surah al-isra which is surah number 17 verse number 23 surah number 17 verse number 23 wa qala rabbuka illa ta'budu illa Qadha means he decreed, he judged. Qadha. How did we know that this alif is originally a ya? In the same surah, if you open the same surah, verse number four, which it says waqab, same surah, 17. وَقَضَيْنَا إِلَىٰ بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلَ فِي الْكِتَابِ لَتُفْسِلُ قَضَيْ قَضَيْنَا قَضَيْنَا So you can see here that there's a clear proof that this alif was originally ayah. And the mudariya Letter. 
אוקיי? שרה הוא... And in Surah Al-Nisa, which is Surah No. 4, فَلْيُقَاتِلْ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ الَّذِينَ يَشْرُونَ الْحَيَاةَ الدُّنْيَا بِالْآخِرَةِ وَمَنْ يُقَاتِلْ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ فَيُقْتَلْ أَوْ يَضْرِبْ فَسَوْفَ نُؤْتِيهِ أَجْرًا عَظِيمًا Yes. It will come in Shabbat. 
والضياء هذا شده ات ويل كم ها ها اي كان هير مدة 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 تو ستريتش اوت مدة مدة بثة بثة يس بثة يس 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 سي سي نعم نعم هو سارة از ليفينج ات نايت ها هو سارة از ليفينج ات نايت بيكوز اتس كونفرت انتو ات از اسيرة اسرة اسرة از ليفينج ات نايت يس سارة از اسيرة Morphological principle here. There is a morphological reason why it was said asra, and this will come in Shahabah in the fourth letter when we we'll explain it to Shahabah. Now, okay. Any questions? Any questions? Imam is one, 
إمامان إمامان with the noon at the end but here there is no noon because when you add this type of word to another the noon is dropped that you will take in grammar that you will take in grammar inshallah so imama and muhaddithin the imam is who? what's the imam? what's the meaning of an imam? the leader an imam is the leader an imam يعني, they say al bihi the one who is followed the lead <laughs> Imam is who? The one followed. So the one followed is called an Imam. An, uh, an imam. That's why the person leading the prayer is called what? Imam because he is followed in his acts from the beginning to the end. So the Imam is the one whom you follow. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Inna Ibrahim kana. Now, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Inni jahilu kadin nasi imama. Kala wa min dhriyati. Kala la yanalu wa yanalu wa hindi dhalimi. Imama. Inni jahilu kadin nasi imama. Where is this? This is in Surah al Baqarah. Surah number two. to follow you. 124 from Surah number 2. A leader. For mankind to follow you. So, the Imam is the followed leader. So he says here, Imam al the leader, the two leaders of the people of Hadith. Of the people of Hadith. Al Muhaddithin is the plural of Muhaddith. Is the plural of Muhaddith. And the Muhaddith is one who narrates the Hadith. Is the one who narrates the Hadith and Muhaddith. Wadi. So they are Al Bukhari and and Muslim are the leaders or are the leading scholars of hadith are the leading scholars of hadith <coughs> we told you a bit about al-Bukhari and those two are very well known so we do not need to mention a bit about their biography so, Rawahu Imam al What is his name? Al Bukhari. His name is Muhammad ibn Ismail, as you can see in the book. Muhammad ibn Ismail ibn Ibrahim. Uh, and that is resembles whose name? Muhammad ibn Ismail ibn Ibrahim. Prophet. This is Muhammad, and he goes up to. Ismail, and Ismail is the son of Ibrahim. Muhammad ibn Ismail ibn Ibrahim, ibn Mughira, ibn Mardisbah, al Jufi. it doesn't say al Jufi there, al Jufi, al Bukhari. Al Bukhari, a reference to Bukhara. Bukhara is an actual place called Bukhara. Abu al-Hussein is Muslim. Muslim's kunya is Abu al-Hussein. And the kunya of of, of uh, al-Bukhari is Abu Abdullah. 
What is the kunya? The kunya is Abu Fulan or Ibn Fulan. The kunya, the word kunya means uh, either the father of so and so or the son of so and so. Okay? And it is better for, for you to have your kunya, your own kunya. As the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gave a kunya to the youngest of his companions. Ah, Aba, Aba Dhar. Laysa kathalik? Ah. So it's good to have a kunya for yourself. Some people, mashaAllah, I meet up with them. And uh, it is known, a tradition here, that we don't, we try not to call people with their first name because we consider it, we consider it a lack of respect but we call the person with his kunya so we say the father of so and so so we say Abu Fulan Abu Fulan so sometimes when I ask the person and Abu Man insha'Allah the father of who insha'Allah he says no not yet <laughs> Not yet, but inshallah soon. So I say there's no contradiction. You can still have a kunya even if you're not married and you don't have kids. <laughs> yes. So, what do you intend to call your, your son when he comes inshallah? Fix a kunya to yourself. And later you can change, no problem. It's easier because it doesn't have, you don't have to go to the embassy and through that procedure and change the passport. No, alhamdulillah, kunya is easy. Mm -hmm. So inshallah, have a kunya for yourself because it is good. If you don't want Abu Fulan, well, Ibn Fulan. Ibn Fulan, the son of Fulan. Okay? Like Ibn Bahir. Or Ibn, etc. Okay? Ibn Umar. Ibn Amr. So Abu or Ibn, this is called a kunya. So what's the kunya of Al-Bukhari, Abu Abdullah? And the kunya of Muslim is Abu Hussein. And the kunya of Al-Imam Malik, Abu Abdullah. And the kunya of Al-Shafi'i. And the kunya of Al-Imam Ahmad, SubhanAllah. All of this Abu Abdullah, like the kunya of Abu Hanifa. <laughs> they asked him because they heard this before. <laughs> Abu Hanifa. So Abu Hussein, Muslim, Ibn Hajjaj, Ibn Muslim, Al Kushayri. And Naysaburi, and Naysaburi is a reference to Naysabur, from where Muslim is. And Naysabur. And Naysaburi, he is a In their two books called a Sahih. Called a Sahih. And Al Bukhari, Al Bukhari's book is Al Jamia. Al Musnad, Al Sahih, Al Muhtasar, Min Sunadi Rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa ayyami. This is the whole name of, or close to that, of the book of Al Bukhari. And Sahih Muslim is called Al Musnad, Al Sahih, Al Muhtasar, Min Al Sunan, Binakl al Adli, Ani al Adli, Ila Rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That's the full name of Muslim's book. But the people commonly say what? Sahih al-Bukhari and Sahih Muslim. And in those two books, al-Bukhari and Muslim put in those two books the authentic of the authentic. Yani the ahadith which reached the highest level in authenticity. Highest level in authenticity. 
Quran. Naam, ahsant. So the most authentic book after the Quran is what? Al-Bukhari. And the scholars agreed upon everything in Al-Bukhari and Muslim being what? Being Sahih, authentic. Being authentic. Being authentic. Well then? The whole name of, of Muslim. Al Musnad Al Sahih Al Muhtasar min al Sunan bin Akli al Adli ila al Adli bin Akli al Adli Ali al Adli ila Rasulillahi Al Musnad Al Sahih Al Muhtasar Al Musnad Al Sahih Al Muhtasar min al Sunan من السنن بنقل العدل إلى العدل بنقل العدل عن العدل إلى رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم المسند has a definition الصحيح has a definition العدل has a definition all of these have definition, but we don't want to go deep into that because that is a certain is a is a certain science called ilm al mustalah. Ilm al mustalah is the knowledge or the science concerning the authentication and uh, the authentication of the hadith. So that is learned in the science called al mustalah. But Al Musnad in general is the book in which it is mentioned the ahadith narrated with the chain of narration to the Prophet. This is called the Musnad. A Sunan is not the chain. A Sunan are the ahadith. A Sunan is whatever was ascribed to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam of actions, words, and uh, confirmations, and attributes. So all of this is falls under what is called a sunnah. Well, okay. Whatever is ascribed to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam of words, actions, confirmations, and attributes. The authentic hadith is one of six, or or is is yes. And what are the levels of the authentic hadith? So the highest level. There are six. The highest level in authenticity is the hadith which both Bukhari and Muslim narrated. Which both Bukhari and Muslim narrated together. This is the highest level of authenticity. So if there is a hadith which both Bukhari and Muslim narrated, it is the most authentic. The most authentic. And I say, I said what I said, which is the Bukhari and Muslim putting, in, placing in their books the, the authentic of the authentic to clarify to you a very important point that Al Bukhari and Muslim did not mean to put in their books all the authentic hadith. As a lot of people misunderstand. <coughs> yani, the authentic hadith are not in, in just Al Bukhari and Muslim. Oh, there's a Bukhari, there's Muslim, there's Abu Dawood, there's Al Nasai, there's Al Tirmidhi, there's Ibn Majah, 
There is uh, Sunan Sa'id ibn Mansur, there is Sunan al-Bayhaqi, there is Sunan al-Darakutni, there is Sunan al-Nasai kubra there is uh, Muslim al-Imam Ahmed, there is Muslim al-Abi Ya'la, there is Muslim al-Shafi, there is Muslim al-Qubaqa, there is Muslim al-Qayalusi, there is Mu'ajam uh, al-Tabarani uh, al-Kabir, Mu'ajam al-Tabarani al-Awsat, Mu'ajam al-Tabarani al-Saghir, books of Sunnah are plenty. Al-Muwatta, Sahih ibn Khuzayma. Sunan al-Darimi, Mustadrak al-Hakim, Sunan ibn Hibban, or Sahih ibn Hibban. It's a lot, a lot. Yani, all the sources of a Sunnah would what? Would cover this wall, or this whole wall. From top to bottom, this whole wall, from, the, from this door until the end is all the sources of a sunnah. This is sources of a sunnah. If you want to see them, you're welcome to my home, insha'Allah, to show you all the sources of a sunnah and introduce them to you. If you wish to know the, the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the sources, you're welcome. So, Al-Bukhari, what's about Al-Bukhari Muslim? Is that Al-Bukhari and Muslim chose the most authentic, the authentic of the authentic. So they did not put in their books all of what they memorized. Otherwise, Al-Bukhari says, أَحْفَظُ مِئَةَ أَلْفِ حَدِيثٍ صَحِيحٍ I memorize a hundred thousand, a hundred thousand authentic hadith. And he put it in the book, how many? Eight thousand from that hundred thousand. Eight thousand from that hundred thousand. See? And Al-Bukhari has a condition in the hadith which he narrates in this book. And his condition is the most strict of conditions of all the muhaddithi. Why? Because he gives the condition of narrating the hadith of those whom had two qualifications. The first is them being in the same generation of the, the scholars they took from, they took the hadith from. This is number one. And number two, that it is proven that that person actually met that person whom he took the hadith from. So, Al-Bukhari does not rest until he is certain that not only the student was in the same time of his teacher whom he took from, but also that he, it, it is proven that he actually met his teacher. Because not everyone who is in the same time as someone is proven that he took from him. He could claim that he took from him, but he didn't. But Muslim did not uh, stick to the second condition. Each author had his own way. Muslim said no. Muslim said it's enough that this person is in the same time as his sheikh. If it is proven that he is in the same generation at the same time and he could be in a certain state where he took from his sheikh, then this, is, uh, this passes in authenticity to Muslim. Okay? So, the first, the highest level of authenticity is the ahadith which both Bukhari and Muslim agreed on narrating. <coughs> this is the highest level of authenticity. Okay? The second level in authenticity is the hadith which Al Bukhari only narrated. The third level is the hadith which Muslim only narrated. The fourth 
is the hadith which obtained the conditions of both Al Bukhari and Muslim. which, uh, which uh, went in a, uh, according to both Bukhari and Muslims condition, conditions. So, now, uh, does this condition also include this? I mean, uh, uh, the, the, the writer made his t-shirt. Huh? The writer made his t-shirt, is that condition? Yes, 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 because we said both of them. Both of the. How is it different from the first one? Well, the first one we are seeing both Muslim and Bukhari. Ah, both. Yeah, for example, Al-Bukhari and Muslim narrated the Hadith, correct? And this Hadith, in this Hadith, that we found another Hadith that has the same men in the chain of narration and the same qualifications, which the hadith uh, that Al-Bukhari narrated. So, for example, Al-Hakim, who has the book Al-Mustadrak al sahihain and Al-Mustadrak means that the hadith that Al-Bukhari and Muslim should have placed in their books because it fits their qualifications. So, Al-Hakim wrote a book gathering all the hadith that could have been added to the Sahih, but they're not in them. Why? Because they pass their qualifications. So sometimes you can find the hadith, correct? And this hadith has the same qualifications as the, as the type of hadith Al-Bukhari and Muslim would have been pleased with, to place in their books. So this is the difference. Understood? So those hadith fit the qualifications that both Al-Bukhari and Muslim want and look for, but they haven't mentioned it in their, in their books. So the scholar after them would say, ah, this fits all the qualifications of Al-Bukhari and Muslim, so they should have mentioned that in their books. And the, the, the person who did that, uh, uh, the scholar who did that is Al-Hakim. Al-Hakim in his Al-Mustadrak. Al-Mustadrak ala sahihayn And it's like a, 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 a uh, an addition, an addition to a sahih. Now, how do we get qualification for a weak? The, for the weak hadith, that we'll learn later, inshallah. The weak hadith, yeah, I mean, uh, there are reasons, of course. Is it to do with the Islam or is it to do No, Islam? it's more than just the Islam. Uh, for knowing that a, the a hadith is weak is not just the chain of narration. No, it is more than just that. Sometimes the chain of narration could be clear as daylight. But there is a problem which you cannot see, which only the scholars of hadith can see. Sometimes, for example, the hadith, the men who are mentioned in the chain of narration are men that are undoubtedly trustworthy in carrying the hadith of the Prophet Sometimes there's no problem when you say, SubhanAllah, this is such a clean chain of narration. There's such a high uh, chain of narration in, in, in the sense of trustworthiness. But the scholar comes and tells you, this person was, for example, five years old or two years old when this person died, how could he have taken from him? Understood? So this is something that proves that the hadith is not authentic. How? How do you know the scholars of hadith know that? The scholars of hadith know that by following the, uh, the news of each narrator and knowing the, the time of his birth, the time of his death, and other reasons as well. Not just that reason, but this is just an example. So this means 
that not every time the chain of narration is sound, the hadith is going to be authentic. And vice versa. Not every time the chain of narration is weak, the hadith is weak. No. Sometimes the chain of narration could be could be having or containing a bunch of uh, lies. But the hadith is authentic. Meaning the statement, that statement of the Prophet ﷺ is authentic from other ahad, from other chains of narrations. So you see, it's not, it, this, is a, this is a certain science. And it's not an easy, it is one of the most difficult sciences. Why? Because it involves you knowing the brief biography of each and every narrator and following his ahadith and knowing whether his ahadith when compared to the ahadith of the trustworthy narrators go together or, or don't so you have to follow all of the ahadith that he narrated and, and, and compare them to the ahadith of the rest of the leading trustworthy scholars if it goes in accordance to that and there's no changes and uh, most of his ahadith are sound, then he is a trustworthy person who can be taken hadith from. If not, then not according to the different levels of weakness in a certain narrator. That is why a person yeah, who uh, uh, needs a, lo a long time of, of uh, practicing this uh, science before he can get to the level of uh, uh, deciding whether a hadith is authentic or not needs more, maybe more than 10 years of much practice. That is why it's not uh, yeah, any, uh, if you see a person who is, uh, who is uh, uh, yeah, choosing whether the hadith is authentic or not, that means he reached a high level in this science, like a Shaykh al-Albali And that is why the people depend uh, mainly upon his uh, opinions in regard to the hadith because he spent the, the, most of his life in that where were we? so this is the fourth the fifth is the hadith which is in accordance to the conditions of al-Bukhari only this is the fifth the sixth is the hadith which fit the qualifications of Muslim only. And there's a the seventh, which I just remembered. There's a the seventh. There's the hadith, which one of the leading trustworthy scholars deemed authentic. And no one else objected. The seventh is a hadith which one of the leading scholars deemed authentic. <coughs> deemed authentic. goes back to one of those seven. And in this order is the level of authenticity. So the highest, it, it starts from the highest to the lowest. How many uh, authentic hadiths were collected by Imam? By? Imam. Same. 8,000. In this book, eight, you mean memorized? Allahu <coughs> Alaihi Allah You said 100,000. Al Muslim, that's Al Bukhari. Al Bukhari said, I, I memorize 100,000 authentic hadith and 200,000 non authentic hadith. And Muslim is a student of Al Bukhari. Muslim is the student of an Imam Al Bukhari. Now. Now, what is the Now, what is the We take first. The, the question of the brother since he. 8,000 Bukhari hadith, all are authentic. Then uh, 
Bukhari? This is the name of the book. Sahih al Bukhari is the name of the book. No, from Al Bani does not have Sahih al Ba'if al Bukhari. He has from from after Bukhari and Muslims, he has Abu Dawood, Sahih Abu Dawood, and Ba'if Abu Dawood. In Bukhari and Muslim, yes. But there are there is a difference in the ahadith which were depended on and the ahadith which were mentioned only to back the ahadith which are depended on. If we go to detail, yani for example, Abu, uh, yani they are the ahadith which are meant to be depended on in Al-Bukhari are not the ahadith which did not have a chain of narration, for example. Like sometimes Al-Bukhari would establish يعني, a certain chapter and he said the chapter so-and-so and the saying of the Prophet so-and-so. So he mentioned the hadith without the chain of narration. Did Al-Bukhari mention this hadith as part of what passed the qualifications and the conditions of the hadith he wanted to mention? No. But he just mentioned it to what? And uh, supporting to what the, uh, the, the title of the chapter implied. Okay? So, it, in general, we say all the ahadith which al-Bukhari and Muslim depended on in their books are authentic. No doubt. As this is by the unanimous agreement of the scholars. But if we come to the ahadith which they did not mean, yani, which they did not, uh, yani, uh, yani, uh, mean to depend on in their books, this differs, the level of authenticity differs. But even though the ahadith which al Bukhari mentioned in his book without a chain of narration, Ibn Hajar wrote a book called Taghliq al Ta'liq to mention all the chains of narrations to the ahadith which Al Bukhari did not mention a chain of narration, and all of the Masai, except maybe two or three. So, conclusion: all of the ahadith and Sahih Al Bukhari and Muslim are authentic from the aspect of the ahadith that they have depended on. Okay. Now. Yes. Yes. All the scholars that are dependent on, who are trustworthy, whom are followed in uh, uh, in, in, in judging on a hadith, whether it is authentic or not, whether it's in the first generations or the the the, the last generations. Well, no. So there are, for example, leading scholars. <coughs> like, for example, Ibn Hajar. <coughs> Ibn Hajar is a leading scholar of a hadith. So if he deems a, a, a certain hadith is authentic, then we take by this ruling of his, just as long as we don't know that there's a difference and a dispute in authenticating this hadith, that's a different case. But if he deems it authentic and no one else objects, it is authentic because he is the most knowledgeable or one of the most knowledgeable in this science. This is his specialty, Ibn Hajar. Well, there. And like a Shaykh al Albani of, of today, Sheikh Al Albani reached to, to that high level as, as well. Rather, one of the scholars said that I don't buy any books of today, but, uh, and, and I was never convinced in reading the books of today, but when I bought the books of Sheikh Al Albani, I saw him. Uh, reaching to conclusions that not even the scholars of hadith of before reached to. So this proves to you that uh, Sheikh Al Albani reached to a very high level of in this in this particular science. Well, okay. Now, what are the conditions uh, of uh, 
As we said, we mentioned the two conditions that uh, two things are proven, that they were in the same time and that the student actually met the sheikh. I mean, the meeting was proven as well. And this, uh, this condition is not, uh, 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 does not, uh, is not, uh, uh, no one, uh, the other uh, scholars are not, uh, not, not obligated to follow that condition. But this is, uh, and they, they even decided this, this is very strict, a strict condition. That is not met, he met the one he narrated from, yes, the one he took from. Otherwise, it is enough that the person is in the same time, do they accept the hadith? If it is proven to them that he is trustworthy, they accept his hadith. It doesn't have to, I mean, it doesn't have to be proven that he meant the shaykh now. Uh, when the uh, Imam Muslim mm. is a student of Imam Bukhari, yes. so there wouldn't be carry of hadith from uh, the teacher? Like, no, because one back then, uh -huh. Uh, they weren't like us settling with just the scholars of their, their city. Oh, they used to travel to many places and take the hadith. So there are some shiyukh for Muslim who are not found in, found in Bukhari and vice versa. Wadeh. So uh, yeah, some, some of them would have a thousand uh, shiyukh whom he took from. Up to a thousand and even more. Shiyukh, uh, teachers, scholars whom they took from. More than a thousand. A thousand is not easy. That's why you have some scholars writing books in just the teachers of a certain person or a certain scholar. And they call those books Kutub al Mashiach. Al Mashiach. And in some books, yani under each scholar, they mention an example of a hadith he narrated from this particular scholar. Okay? And some of those books are in many volumes. Now. I'm uh, interested to uh, number seven. From? Number seven. Number seven, yes. If uh, leading scholars, mm. as it is now, which whether everybody can uh, say this hadith is authentic and it meets the condition of the uh, current and uh, atmosphere, if they probably like uh, have other, other, other content that is more than what in the condition of uh, the first two scholars, Imam Mal Muslim and Imam Al Bukhari, by, by their book as in level of ability, it means it's correct? There's nothing higher than that. There's nothing higher than the condition. Uh, I, I really don't understand that seven. You didn't understand what? The seven part. The seventh, yeah, I mean, if there's a hadith, okay? whom nobody uh, um, uh, 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 gave a ruling, passed a ruling on. Okay? And there's a trustworthy scholar in, of hadith who came and, and after investigating in this hadith, reached to the conclusion of this hadith being authentic, then this is an authentic hadith. And it is the, the, the last level of authenticity, the least level of authenticity. Understood? Is it understood? You didn't understand. Okay. And for example, there's a certain hadith, okay, in the books of a hadith, which wasn't investigated before. See, a lot of these scholars before <coughs> did not have time to investigate a certain hadith in terms of authenticity. So what they did, they left the investigation part on others coming after them. So um, uh, this explains why a lot of them would mention a hadith that are non-authentic in their books. And sometimes, for example, you have books that contain a hadith, and those hadith are not authentic, for example, or a lot of them, a great deal of them, is not authentic. 
So the person who does not have knowledge, he says, why does the scholar mention a hadith that's not authentic in his book? So why did they do that, my dear brothers and sisters in Islam? Because they wanted to preserve the hadith of the Prophet Okay? So they preserved in their books all the hadith that they memorized. And they did not have the time to investigate these ahadith, whether they're authentic or not, or what level of authenticity they are in. So now, what, what do they do? What is wiser? That they wait until they investigate each hadith, which takes a long time to do, or for now, they write down those ahadith and keep it so it will be preserved for the people who come after them to, to do the investigation. Which is wiser? The second one, no doubt. That's why a lot of scholars who narrated the ahadith wrote, for example, some scholars would write books for certain ahadith. Uh, some scholars would write books on the ahadith in the, in the topic of aqidah. So they narrate everything they know, everything they took, everything they memorized, they put in their books. And they, they come to a certain chapter and they say the chapter of, for example, uh, uh, seeing Allah. So they mention to you all the ahadith that they have memorized in this topic. And they left, they didn't pass a ruling on the hadith. They left that job for people after them or for people other than them in maybe, maybe probably in their same time as well to pass the ruling on this on this particular hadith. Understand? So now we have one of the books of those scholars who mention everything what they know, everything what they memorize of the ahadith. So, a scholar, for example, of today might come to a certain hadith and investigate it. Investigates his men, goes back to the books which contain the biographies of the narrators, and searched and, and, uh, and uh, compared the hadith of this narrator with the hadith of the other trustworthy scholars, and saw uh, how much it, 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 uh, uh, it is the. Uh, um, it, it is uh, resembling the hadith of the rest. So when he reached to, the, to, to a conclusion after a severe investigation that this hadith passes all the qualities of authenticity, he deems it authentic. Uh, here, this is an authentic hadith. So we take this as an authentic hadith. Understand? Understood? Now, about, uh, why the chief, like, the, the of, uh, Yes. Yeah, this is, as I told you, I told you, the unlike the hadith where there's a difference, I told you, if the hadith was deemed authentic by a trustworthy scholar and there was no objection from the rest, I clearly stated that. If there's an objection, then there's a, that's a matter which is, which is considered a matter of dispute, just like the other matters of dispute. Just as long as they are both close in the same level of knowledge in that particular field, the field of hadith. So but if someone is more knowledgeable, who do we take the judgment of who? Of the one who is most knowledgeable. Well then, Two, three hadith from uh, Bukhari and Muhammad uh, is not authenticated. You think the narrators are not reached in that level. So, do we take that hadith or we discard it? I told you, all the ahadith in Bukhari and Muslim are authentic. They have agreed upon that. Sheikh Ibn Hajar mentioned that two, three hadith are not authenticated. They answered. They answered all of that. All of the yeah, any, uh, comments that were made on the ahadith, on some ahadith that uh, would seem that it won't reach that level of authenticity, they answered all of that.
Okay, yani they are just as you a very yani small minority which you have mentioned three, but uh, yani uh, this is a, yani a matter yani could be dis that could be disputed on, but at the end all the scholars agreed upon the hadith in their being authentic. So this issue is not to be uh, opened and spread out between the people after the agreeing the unanimous agreement of the scholars. Now so let's say uh, uh, like uh, Abu Dawood he said that this hadith is sahih. Yeah. Can the scholar of today say that it is not sahih? Yeah it depends. It depends <coughs> if the scholar proves by the, the proof that this hadith did not reach the level of authenticity <coughs> it could be disputed. Abu, Abu Dawood's uh, judgment could be disputed. Abu Dawood, uh, Abu Dawood did not Yani, um, he said that whatever I have not commented on of the hadith I mentioned in my book, then it is who uh, salih. what does that mean, salih? That means it is, it is, it could be authenticated. It could be authenticated. That's why. Uh, the book of Abu Dawood is considered one of the main sources of al-hadith ascribed as Hassan. And Hassan is basically a hadith which is weak, but when this hadith came from another way which is also weak, uh, this weakness, um, uh, you can say, uh, strengthened the, the weakness of another, uh, reaching it to the level of authenticity. And this is in the case where, for example, the narrator is, uh, yeah, he makes mistakes. And he, sometimes the scholars would record on certain narrators that they sometimes make mistakes in the hadith. So they don't accept their hadith unless it comes from another way which might be, have some weakness as well, and this weakness is strengthened by the weakness of the other, uh, taking it to the level of authenticity. MashaAllah, there's a lot of questions today, MashaAllah, about hadith and its authenticity and not, and this is because this is an independent science which is learned, which is called al mustalah And then this would involve and involve علم الحديث and uh, one of the toughest يعني, uh, sciences to undertake now the hadith Arabic speaks to me from three and what do we say from the second the hadith that are disputed yeah. we take the most knowledgeable the most knowledgeable we follow his judgment on the hadith most knowledgeable scholar in hadith, we follow his judgment because he knows better. He knows best. So for today, for example, Sheikh al-Albani is the top, top leading scholar in hadith. That means his judgment on the hadith comes before the judgment of any other scholar. As long as there is a scholar who proves, and he buy a proof, by a clear proof, that a Sheikh Al Albani, for example, has mistaken in this judgment. And that's little. The mistakes that could be found in that, it's little. Now. One of the conditions of Al Bukhari is that the teacher and the narrator should be. Should be? Should be. Should be? Should be. Should be. Should be. Yes, yes. Now, how do we explain the fourth category? The fourth? In the, in the level of that means it is proven to us that the student met his shape. It is proven to us that the student met his shape. And this is regarding the hadith that were yeah, the, uh, recorded back then. Yeah. So, uh, does the fourth condition mean that uh, the scholar should be in the level? You mean the fourth case? Like if only the conditions of Imam Bukhari were met, does it fall under 
If only the conditions of Imam Bukhari was met, the second of fourth category, because like. Muslims, Muslims, condition was much, much shorter. No, not only regarding that condition. Yeah, I mean, if, if they gathered, this hadith gathered together, the, the both, like it had men in the chain of narration, which both Al-Bukhari and Muslim chose. Yes, and not just that. Yes. And that's why I, fit, I said fit all the qualifications. Now, now. Please, please, no. This al Muqtadrak has the same authenticity level as Sahih Bukhari Muslim. Can't we just lift that? Uh, that uh, Sorry, this hadith? This al Muqtadrak al-Sahih by al-Hakim. No, not all, not all of it. That's why scholars have written books refuting some judgments of al-Hakim. And it was said that al-Hakim did not uh, revise his book. It was said that, even though that's, that could be disputed as well. Uh, that's why there are a uh, lot of judgments uh, in al hakim which are not, uh, يعني, which are disputed and uh, reconsidered. Now, understood? That's why they have written some books, some scholars have written some books, which uh, correct al hakim in uh, some of his judgments on the hadith. And uh, even there are some hadith which said, which where the hak, uh, al hakim said that they are in the same level, but they are not. And the scholars have proved it with, with the evidence. Now, so now, uh, You said that Shaykh Al Bani is the current, uh, current scholar, which you can leading scholar. Yes. Leading scholars we can lay on. So yeah. if any of the disputes, the today scholars happen related to this hadith, we can just lay on. Then uh, Shaykh Al Bani comes first, no doubt. Yeah, and money comes first, no doubt. Now, Ustad, can we say that other than the book of Imam Bukhari and Imam Muslim, all the other hadith are picture of Sayyid and Dayyid? This two is purely Sahih. Yeah, fully, yes. You yeah. can say that. Yes. Yes. yes, fully Sahih and Bukhari and Muslim. The rest, they might, con they might c contain Ba'if and Sahih. Very good. No, that's a good, con correct conclusion. Now, different regions, like Islamic regions, for example, Pakistan, India, and then we have the Middle East and we have Malaysia, they call upon different books. So like everyone uses Bukhari and Muslim as the child. Yes. But so different regions call upon different books, because you mentioned almost 20 different books. No, 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 all of them. These books are all one. Mm -hmm. There's no difference between all the uh, Islamic regions that those books mm -hmm. are the sources of the See, if you go back to the sound, correct knowledge, they all agree upon the same thing. Whether it's the books of Hadith, whether it's the books of jurisprudence, whether it's the books, it's all the same. There might be slight differences in some things, or in some uh, differences uh, in some statements in manuscripts, but in general, they agree on the same books. So wherever, wherever you go, Every scholar of hadith, whether in Pakistan, or whether in India, or whether in Russia, or wherever you go, he will tell you the same thing and the same books. He will mention to you the same books. Now, this is agreed upon. Now, how much concern should an average God-fearing Muslim have with these disputes about the narration, about the The layman should not, be, should not get into disputes. The layman... His business is to study the basics, is to not engage himself into disputes. The layman he takes from the scholar he trusts in, and he ignores the issues of dispute, because this is not his business. The layman's business is not to occupy himself with the dispute, because this is the steps of the shaytan. The shaytan wants to, to busy the layman from learning the basics of his religion by occupying him with disputes so he never learns the basics. So the, 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 the business of engaging into matters of dispute is the business of a student of knowledge who reached to a high uh, level of knowledge where he starts weighing the different opinions according to the evidence. But is this the business of the layman who does not know how to pray? who, if he is asked, what are the pillars of a salah, 
he, he, he drops his jaw down. No, this is not his business. His business is to learn the basics. Is to learn the basics. Unless it, I mean, there's a person who comes across and proves to him that this opinion is not authentic and he proves it to him with the evidence and the person, the layman is convinced and he follows what he is convinced in if the evidence supports it not just because it's easy as a, a lot of people today they follow a different opinion just because it's easier no the, the scholars <coughs> agreed upon following what is closest to the evidence, not just what is easier. Yes, our religion is an easy religion. But that's, that does not mean that you follow the permits for yourself or, or, or for your desire. No. You follow, yeah, what they call fatwa shopping, I said. But we, they follow what? They follow what is closest to the deleed if they understood it. They understood it, that it's closer to the city, they follow that. Now, you start the brother asks uh, regarding all like the hadiths like in Asia or the Yes, uh, it's, yes. It's all the same. Mm. But uh, I suspect it's like, if you say it again, Pakistan might be the, the people who follow uh, the, the collection of hadith, which is like Fazal Amal, which has uh, the. I said the books. I did not say the level of authenticity. I said the books. Fazal Amal, Fazal Amal, that's a different topic. Fadail al-A'mal is, is, the off, is the weak hadith used in Fadail al-A'mal or not? This is a matter of dispute. And the strongest opinion is that it's not used. Because it is not the hadith that, is, that the Prophet sent in the first place. But even the ones who uh, used the hadith in the Fadail al-A'mal, in the merits, in the merits and the superiority of some actions, even the scholars who use such a hadith which are weak, they had conditions, four conditions. And those conditions, it is proven that they are hardly found in a hadith. First condition, that it has to fall under an authentic foundation, which is proven, an authentic hadith. Second, that it, uh, it is not believed that it proves a certain ruling, this weak hadith. And there are other I mean, there are other conditions as well. No. Yes? No, he he didn't mention the book a uh, book uh, was called which is called Allah. Al but he's talking in general, I believe. Yes, in general. No. No. Any other question? So next uh, next next Next, next Friday will be Hadith Jibreel, inshallah. And uh, you will be sent the notes of Inna Man Ahmad Niyat Soon, inshallah. There has been a delay because we're trying to give you the best notes, inshallah, covering all the points of the Hadith. So um, soon you will receive, inshallah, through, through uh, Kalima, you'll be sent the notes. And next Friday will be Hadith Jibreel, the, the second Hadith. And tomorrow is fifth, inshallah, Arabic fifth.